Good morning again. Exactly a hundred years ago, Albert Einstein theoretically predicted the existence of gravitational waves. Today, I'm going to tell you how we can use these elusive ripples in space and time to observe the universe in a completely different manner. So let me start with a bit of history. The modern astronomy begins with Galileo Galilei, the Italian uh, physicist, astronomer, mathematician, and engineer, who lived in the 16th century, about 400 years before. So uh, Galileo made a remarkable instrument called the Astronomical Telescope. And when he looked at the sky using uh, this telescope, uh, he discovered something very, very unusual. He made some number of unusual discoveries. One is that, for example, when he looked at the moon, he found that the moon is not a perfect translucent sphere until it was thought then. It was instead marred by large mountains and craters, and its uh, surface is you know, even more imperfect than the surface of the Earth. So, uh, see, he um, recorded his, his observations in, in his exquisite drawings, which are remarkable uh, even now. So when um, Galileo looked at the Jupiter using his telescope again, he saw three little objects moving around the Jupiter, the moons of the Jupiter. This was also completely unexpected, because until then, most of the philosophers believed that all the celestial bodies orbited the Earth, because the Earth was the center of the universe, after all. So Galileo's discoveries challenged the prevalent worldview of the times, and essentially it became an integral part of what is called the scientific revolution. And all of the modern science and technology essentially came out of this movement. So uh, I would say that the astronomy has an important impact on our, on our daily lives. Another, uh, the last century witnessed another major revolution in astro astronomy. For example, people realized that uh, there is light that is beyond the frequency bands of visible light, so called the electromagnetic radiation. So our human eye is sensitive to only a small fraction, small range of frequencies of the full electromagnetic waves. And for example, uh, radio waves. Uh, microwaves, X-rays, etc. And in the last century, scientists have built instruments that can detect uh, light, this invisible light from these various frequencies of the electromagnetic spectrum. And when they used uh, these instruments to observe the universe, it again brought another big discovery, and essentially a, a broader revolution, I would say. So, for example, if you look at the universe in microwaves, what you get to see is a picture of the universe when it was only a 400,000 years old. Remember that our universe is something like 13 billion years old now. So at this young age, the 400,000 years old, the universe was just a bowl of hot gas. So this uh, hotter regions shown in this, this red here essentially became stars and galaxies. And these uh, blue regions, the, the cooler regions, essentially became large intergalactic voids. So it's completely fair to say that essentially the entire information that we have, uh, we have above the universe essentially come from astronomical observations of different frequencies of uh, electromagnetic waves. But recently, uh, astronomical observations using completely different messengers have become possible. This is using gravitational waves. As I said earlier, Einstein theoretically predicted the existence of gravitational waves exactly 100 years ago as part of his theory of gravity called the general theory of relativity. So this theory predicts that any massive object like the Earth curves the space and time around each other. So, uh, so gravity is nothing but the curvature of space and time. So since the space is curved, light that usually travels through a straight line starts to bend near a massive object. And what does it mean to curve time? It means that, light, uh, that the time runs slower near a massive object. 
for example, near a black hole or near the surface of the Earth. It, it sounds completely ridiculous, I know, but these effects have been measured with remarkable accuracy by a number of laboratory tests as well as a, 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 a feed of astronomical observations. In fact, we all use the predictions of Einstein's theory in our daily lives. For example, I use Einstein's theory to navigate myself to this venue this morning using a GPS. So the, the tiny slowing of time at the surface of the Earth, due to the mass of the Earth, has to be precisely accounted for the GPS system to work. So the Einstein's isotric theory has already made its way to our daily lives in technology. So, uh, I said gravity is the curvature of space and time. So if objects move, the motion of massive objects create ripples in space and time called gravitational ripples. So uh, we expect a, a number of astronomical phenomena, distant astronomical phenomena, such as to, to create gravitational waves. For example, the two compact stars orbiting each other in a binary system, or when two black holes collide in a, in a, in a distant universe, basically produce these ripples in space-time that propagates outwards and reaches, and that can be potentially detected by uh, observers in the Earth. So when a gravitational waves pass through the Earth, they distort the space in a very characteristic fashion, like uh, moon dust uh, by creating tides on, on the surface of the Earth. So, uh, so essentially gravitational waves create tides on the Earth, but these distortions are extremely tiny. For example, when a gravitational wave passes through the Earth, the Earth's diameter changes temporarily by a small amount. Uh, by an amount that is comparable to the size of an atomic nucleus, extremely small amount. A, a large number of international, uh, a, a large international collaboration of scientists under the umbrella of the uh, LIGO scientific collaboration, LIGO-Virgo scientific collaboration, has been engaged in an exciting search to detect these tiny ripples in space-time, these tiny perturbations in the space. Uh, using very large instruments called the LIGO and Virgo observatories. And they met the first success on the 14th September 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, we have detected gravitational waves. We did it. This is David Dreisey, the, the, the director of the LIGO laboratory in, at Caltech. So this signal, by studying the observed signal, the scientists have concluded that this is produced by the merger of two black holes at a distance of 1.3 billion light years away. These black holes were uh, 30 times as massive as the sun, and they merged to produce an even more massive black hole that is 60 times the mass of the sun that is rapidly rotating. In the, in the, in the, in the entire history of astronomy, this is the first time we are observing a direct signal from a black hole, because by definition, black holes do not emit any light. So you cannot detect black holes when using any traditional ways of electromagnetic astronomy. This was such an energetic event, so that since the energy released in the gravitational waves over an extremely small period of time, a tiny fraction of a second, essentially was larger than the luminosity of all the stars in the universe put together. Uh, you could say that it outshined the entire visible universe in a tiny fraction of time by putting all this energy into gravitational waves. So why is it is it an incredibly big discovery? Apart from proving Einstein's right, this is essentially beginning a completely new way of looking at the universe. It's a completely new branch of astronomy. So, so uh, I would say that it's not a way of looking at the universe because uh, the gravitational waves that we can detect currently have the frequencies of the audio frequency band, the frequency bands that we can listen using our, our ears. So it's more like listening to the universe. Gravitational wave astronomy is like listening to the universe. So in this sense, I can say that the future of astronomy is not only bright, but it's also very loud. Thank you very much. <laughs>